Hello everyone and welcome to my Ferrari Car Guide. Today we're going to talk about premium cars, specifically the Enterprise. This is the third in our premium car series where we've already covered the Kaga and the Saipan and as we say we're now going to cover the Enterprise. If you haven't already seen our previous playlist we've covered the American and the Japanese car lines so they're there for everyone who wants to see but this is our setup captain guide and playlist so we play a random battle at the end and showcase uh, what I would do and why I would do it. So that being said let's get into the game. Here is our Enterprise. Now the Enterprise is a tier 8 carrier, so it's the highest tier of premium carrier that we have and it has a number of unique traits. Now when the Enterprise was released the American carrier line was quite rigid in its ways. Plane wave size, torpedo bomber wave size, the drop pattern, that type of stuff. The Enterprise was the first carrier to come out with armor piercing dive bombs, a new mechanic that Wargaming were trying to play, and they tried to uh, possibly balance the Enterprise around its primary counterpart, the Shokaku. Uh, being a balanced ship, 222, the Enterprise, as we now have a look on the modules, only comes with one flight control module, also 222. So on this, the side of it, we're thinking, oh, well, this, this is very interesting. I wonder how this is going to play out. Now, there are some big caveat differences here between the Enterprise and its main counterpart, the Shokaku, which I'm going to compare, not only for random battles, but also for ranked slash competitive, because tier 8, we have King of the Sea and elements like that, it is definitely a potential candidate of a ship to be used. And then I guess we'll also kind of maybe kind of compare it against the Lexington, but the Lexington unfortunately is still not fit for service, considering it only has a single fighter plane wave. Right, that being said, our fighter planes are tier 7. Now that's the first bad thing about the Enterprise. Why is that bad? Well, they have less health and they have less speed. All the other planes will be tier 8, they'll be tankier, they'll be faster, they can move around where they need to be in the map better. I don't like the down tiering of the fighter planes that much. Now, with the captain skill, dogfighting expert, the Enterprise, when it clicks on engagement, is actually better than the Shukaku. So the plane wave of the American will beat the plane wave of the Japanese and two fighter waves will obviously beat the Lexington's one as well so in that respect it's okay it's just when it comes to scouting with the fighter plane or fighting over hostile anti-air the Enterprise suffers because its fighter plane is slower and it's weaker plus because of the speed you need to be careful about if the enemy catches your fighters in the wrong position and then he bombs somewhere else you can't get from A to B quick enough to kind of stop that. It's something like the advantage of the Saipan has because its planes are faster. The torpedo bombers and the dive bombers are also tier 7. Now this is negated ever so slightly by the upgrades which we'll go into a second here because the Enterprise gets the tier 9 upgrade option. So that being said we get two waves of five fighter wave not six like the standard American, and with the uh, air supremacy that goes up to six. So we've got two waves of six compared to the American normal wave of sevens. Our torpedo bombers are two waves of five. So on the surface, that's like, oh wow, we have 10 torpedo bombers. That's amazing. And this is kind of a caveat here. The drop pattern on the uh, American Enterprise is garbage for torpedo bombers. It's okay for battleships ish. It's too narrow in the front, three wide in the back. Uh, if I'm correct, or it could be the other way around. Do you know what? I'm having a brain freeze. We'll go into round battle and we'll see for ourselves. But anyway, the point is, it's very, very difficult to cross drop destroyers with these torpedo bombers. It's okay ish on cruisers, but it's still kind of eh. But against battleships and other carriers, you know, the, the torpedo bombers are actually quite powerful. Then, the what was the selling point for a point on the Enterprise is the fact that it has powerful um, ish kind of dive bombers but they're only using the tier 7 dive bombs so they're not the same wide drop pattern so you're like well that's not very good it's t they're using a tier 7 plane in a tier 8 bracket that doesn't have the tier 8 HE it's using the tier 7 HE so what about the armor piercing well armor piercing is actually quite good and the armor piercing bomb on the Enterprise is the same bomb that all the other American tier 8 910s are using the same armor piercing bomb for and at tier 8 it is a good armor piercing bomb Against targets that are tier 9 and 10, however, it doesn't perform very well in the anti-battleship world because the armor mechanics are such that you do very little damage. However, what makes the armor-piercing bomb good is that it's an accurate reticle. It's an elliptical uh, reticle, which means you can aim over target and with good enough skill, you can have all your bombs hit. It removes the RNG element that the high explosive dive bombers got. You don't get the chance for fires and you don't have the kind of the general damage against other targets like 
um, destroyers, because the armor piercing will just overpin and do very little damage. So you have to rely on your torpedo bombers, and your torpedo bombers are actually really bad at hitting these destroyers. It's kind of a conundrum there what you what you can and can't do. It's always a bit of a mix match. I'll talk about uh, random and ranked after we've gone through the setup, so we'll come back to that. But in terms of upgrades, we definitely want to bump up our, uh, our fighter's guns. We need this extra kind of little edge, so if we come across, like for example, any other carrier that's got this edge, it balances out, and that means we overall will will against the Shikaku and it's balanced against another Enterprise. Um, we also want the extra fighter health and the ammunition, lots of strafes, lots of health, the tankiness as we talked about, they're tier 7s, so we need to beef them up as much as we possibly can, we want to fight. Uh, like all, all other previous carriers, we want to mitigate the chance that we're put in fire and floods, fire kind of obviously prevents us from taking off and landing, so that's bad. Um, we also then want to reduce the time that we are on fire, if we are, because we don't necessarily, on one fire we may choose not to use our damage control party if we see other planes are loitering in the area waiting to bomb us, so the, the having damage control modification too is always better than propulsion steering which we're not really going to need. Concealment system mod 1, there's no reason why you would want target, you're going to be slightly further back so you want to be a little bit stealthier so you can maybe get close to the front line or run away or whatever. But here's the selling point, this is the only tier 8 carrier that has access to the tier 9 slash 10 upgrades. So the options we have are really beefy AA, really beefy secondaries, or upgrading our plane's speeds, or upgrading our plane's attack health. Now. Personally, I will choose attack health for realistically two reasons. One is I want the planes to be tank here in the bomb room. I feel that the planes having more health going in for attack means they survive long enough to drop than the speed. I think the health is better than the speed. The 5% cruising speed, the planes are all relatively, relatively slow. Like, the aircraft cruising speed might be good on a carrier that has really fast planes. For example, if the Saipan could have it because of the tier 9s, tier 9s, 10s, 5% is good. I don't believe the 5% speed on a plane that goes 133 knots or 137 knots is going to make that much of a difference uh, to the bombers. To the fighters, it might buff up a little bit so you can catch other planes, but do you really need the speed bonus for fires? Do you really want to kind of sacrifice the, the health from the bombers to you know give them speed? Or alternatively, attack eight aircraft get more health. Now, one of the other major reasons why you want that is more about scouting. scouting. Like if your bombers have dropped their payload or their dive bombers have dropped their payload, but you have a destroyer that's there or you have a cruiser or a battleship that's trying to run away or is trying to be hidden or maybe there's some guy on a certain point or you want to spot torpedoes coming into your team but you're inside enemy AA bubbles, speed isn't going to help you in this scenario. Speed might help you avoid enemy fighters or get you into the target and then away and so you're inside the enemy AA less, right? But there's still going to be that initial bang of AA when you're in the bubble where the health pool is going to help you more than necessarily the speed. But if you want to scout instead of an MAA bubble, having the health is going to be the big difference here. And that's the main reason why I choose this, is so that if I have to spot inside an MAA bubble, the planes last longer and they don't just die. And that, that's part of the reason. And it's, it's quite good. It makes the Enterprise Tier 7 planes viable. And actually, the cumulative health of the plane waves is very, very high. Uh, the hit points, for example, in the Torpedo Bombers is 1,823. You get five of them, so the cumulative health pool of that Torpedo Bomber wave is quite high. The Dive Bomber is a uh, 1729 and it can be um so that, yeah the repeat bomber is a wave of five the dive bomber is a wave of six so you know you got two waves of six cumulatively the health is quite large uh, and, and so you can tank any and you can spot for a long time if you want to and ammunition consumables it's a tier 8 carrier so we get defensive fire and we get a uh, damage control party i personally just pick the premium version of both of them just in case someone was foolish enough to try and kind of CV snipe or attack you or perhaps in ranked scenarios you need it because maybe one you're defending yourself early on or two you're defending you and other teammates uh, if the game's getting pretty desperate so having the extra charge there's very helpful the damage control party too is very helpful as well because if you take some random shot or some fire or maybe there's a dive bomber like a Shikaku dives you with just one dive bomber you're not going to use your damage defensive fire for one dive bomber your AA might pick some of them but maybe it gets like a single fire or something you may use your damage control party, you may not. You may let it burn out, or maybe it gets too far, so then you have to use the damage control party. He's going to try and come and attack you again, maybe. So the fact is, having the damage control party on a quick enough cool timer means that these little annoying one dive bomber, one dive bomber kind of harassing you because your fighter's in the center and he wants to pull your fighters away to defend yourself. You don't want to do that. You want to defend your team in the middle. So having the damage control party too is very, very helpful. In terms of exteriors, well comes with the stock camouflage, I'm at the moment using uh, the very fancy Victory camo because I think it looks cool and I'm also getting some captain experience because I've got 19 point captain. Uh, signals, 
in combat, and this I'm currently in rank setup, so I'm using the AA signal because if anything comes within my AA range, I want to flick it off as much as I possibly can. I want speed because I might need to run away from somewhere or run away from being spotted, so maneuverability is very helpful. And because I have uh, my I have armor piercing dive bombs that can't have fire, but I do want to increase the chance of flooding from my two torpedo bomber waves. I'm not going to hit with all ten because of the wonky drop pattern. Even five is considered a good drop, so I want to have maximized the chance of flooding in combat mode. Now you could drop the four percent flooding signal, and you could take an economic or a special signal if you're in randoms or you're just playing casually. But if you're doing ranked like I am currently, I would just go maximum tryhard. Uh, flag, pick your poison, whatever you want. At the moment, I'm using 20% servicing cost from Premier League, but that's up to you. Right, now, captain skills. Okay, so there's a few ways you can do about this, but I'm using my midway captain here. And in this particular sense, the base 11 point skills are not changed. We're taking aircraft servicing expert because we want the tankier bombers and planes and all that type of stuff, so that's a no-brainer. The torpedo acceleration I like because the, torpedo, the American torpedo bombers are typically slow. If I want to cross drop with the terrible torpedo bombers that I have, then I need to take torpedo acceleration. I'm going to cross drop even just to remotely try and hit something if I have to with the torpedo bombers. It's, it's awkward, it's clunky, but it's better than anything else since you've got two torpedo waves. If I only had one torpedo bomber wave, maybe I wouldn't use take torpedo acceleration. Maybe I wouldn't approach from the side and from the back and the side. Maybe I'd only approach from the side and then maybe I'd take adrenaline rush in case I take damage. But the fact is, the Enterprise, you're not going to be sniping an Enterprise as another carrier unless by some chance you take a random battleship hit because you are spotted and you're down to half health the odds of someone actually trying to kill you isn't going to work because the self-defense of the enterprise the defensive fire the aa and your fighters it's very difficult to get bomber planes to you and do meaningful amounts of damage for then the adrenaline rush to take effect so so i personally would take to be like acceleration and then because the torpedo bombers i feel are a very powerful source of your damage output you know the armor piercing dive bombs are good against, for example, German battleships, that type of stuff, which you can obliterate. So anything tier eight down is is, is, is really powerful. The armor piercing dive bombs are not particularly good against cruiser, except from Martels. So it's, it's very selective. Some ships are good against, some are bad. Um, so the dive bombers are good in certain elements, but I think the torpedo bombers are better to quickly turn them around. And then those are the planes that you want to kind of hit targets with. Now, you could argue that well. If it's ranked battles, maybe you don't need to be in rank speed, maybe you don't need to get the torpedo bombers up as quick as possible, and you can take basic fire training, and that's fine. But how often do planes come into your AA bubble, and how often do planes you try and attack you? And the odds are probably not enough to justify taking basic fire training. It's probably better to take the torpedo armor and expertise. So where are you going to get the maximum benefit for the most number of games? And in random battles, you also want to turn around your torpedo bombers as quick as possible. You, you can get more damage in. So for the fourth point skill, I'm taking air supremacy. I want to buff up the two fire waves. I want to buff up the two dive bomber waves. This is, that's four extra planes already. The fighters, because we can get good air control. The dive bombers, because we want to lol obliterate any German battleship that's crazy enough to go by himself or any other target that potentially could be vulnerable. Certain tier 10 cruisers are vulnerable to these particular bombs, like the Moskvas, I believe. Um, but, you know, so more planes is better. Uh, for the 11th point, we're taking dogfighting expert. This is extremely important on the Enterprise. I'd even say you want an 11 point captain before you go in to play games because you have down tiered fighters at tier 7. You will be fighting against tier 8 fighters. The Lexington has a tier 8 fighter. The Shokaku has tier 8 fighters. The only way you win the click and engagement where your planes click on the Shokaku planes is if you have dogfighting expert. If you've got dogfighting expert, you win a click on engagement. It means it's up to the Shokaku player to strafe you or to aggressively somehow attack you and then exit. If he clips on you, then exit strafes, he's already lost a plane and you're winning. If he just clicks on you and there's no other AA or a benefit, you know, to either team happening there, you're going to win that engagement and probably by a landslide, uh, you know, like four planes and left and he has none is an example. So dogfighting expert makes it viable. And then the extra ammunition, that's just a really good bonus. But ultimately D DFE is very, very helpful. Now, our leaves is with eight points. What did we pick with eight points? Well, I would highly recommend concealment expert next. This takes our concealment down to 10.7, which is about the same, if actually it's a little bit less, than the Shikaku's 10.8. It means you can be far stealthier, you can be a little bit closer, or you can no need to be so far away. Your planes are slower, so the turnaround, the flight time of your planes is better. And all round, it's the sweet spot of detectability, around that 10, 11 kilometer range for a carrier. You can be close, but not close enough. And you've got enough uh, kind of warning if like a ship comes into your uh, detection range and your ship detects you're like, ah, well, somebody's spotting me. You've got enough time to deal with that. So it's, it's kind of the sweet spot for me. So I think it's worth the four points to take Concealment Expert. The last four points, well, you've got really powerful mid-range. 
you've got some long range caliber powerful guns so but ultimately rather than taking manual fire control armor for a armament which would you know make your uh long range caliber guns quite powerful that's maybe something you'd use in the shikaku i feel that using advanced fire training to push the mid-range guns out is really good so if anything comes into the mid-range it means your defensive fire has because the defensive fire works in the mid-range uh, guns not the long range guns so that means your defensive fire is up to 4.2 so if you want to be a protective ship to protect somebody else with your aa you have a bigger bubble it means you can protect yourself the planes are panicked further away and you get a little damage multiplier uh, but also it means you're pushing your long range guns up to six kilometers so if anything kind of flies up to you you're just clicking on him six kilometers he starts taking a little bit of hits but more importantly when he enters that 4.2 kilometer range which still isn't close enough to start dropping you you start doing some proper serious damage because you've pushed that AA range out more and it's probably the best compromise of things and plus your secondaries i guess you could argue are a little bit <laughs> a little bit more range at 5.4 but that's not really what we're after we're just after to push the AA range out and we're looking for those four points what can we spend those other four points on other than AFT? Nothing that's really helpful. And trust me, having the extra long range AA is really, really helpful in ranked games in that type of sense. Speaking of which, we're now gonna go into a random battle to showcase uh, what we can do and who we play against and that type of stuff. And it's probably gonna go against uh, tier nine and tens because that's what happens in today's current matchmaking. But before that happens, this ship is probably not viable and competitive. Now the reason it's not viable and competitive is because everybody plays together as a team has knows there's going to be a carrier for example king of the sea and will have it's all about spotting seeing what the enemy's doing and then denying sight for the enemy planes and then working around that and in that sense the 312 shikaku is better it's got three fighters that can jostle across the whole map it doesn't need to fight your fighters unless it's inside some sort of friendly aa bubble because it's still preventing you from seeing those planes uh, no ships and the two dive bombers from the Japanese, they're, they're, they can drop the payload and they can go faster than your fighters and they can scout in the back of the line and they can spot torpedo bombers. It's a lot of flexibility, plus he still then has a torpedo bomber, which is somewhat accurate to maybe go after a destroyer or to maybe torp into the smoke, that type of stuff. By counterpart, the Enterprise has slower fighters that health pool are kind of eh, but there's only two of them and they're kind of slower. The torpedo bombers aren't the grace for cross-dropping destroyers and you only have the 2-2-2 set up. So you can't really go after the destroyers and going after the bigger ships, lots of combined AA, lots of AA captains, lots of defense fires, you're not gonna get any bombing in. The armor piercing bombs do eh, okay damage, but not against destroyers and not against cruisers. It's against battleships and not even against carriers either. So it's only against battleships that the AP bombs really become like powerful. And of course, there's only gonna be like two BBs in the enemy team of nine, maybe three, but the fact is they're not necessarily always gonna be German either. So you don't really get the benefit of the enterprise in an organized battle at tier eight now that's not to say no one will not take it there are times when this could be useful but i'm afraid i don't see how the enterprise could work in competitive that being said ranked is a completely different story because in ranked the carriers are a rare thing one in 10 games one in 20 games for people who don't play carrier which means it's not worth them taking AA captain builds. It's sometimes not worth taking AA ship Kudosovs. They don't take defensive fire, they take hydro. You know, it, so the, the meta is that they don't come across carriers often, so they don't have AA builds. And even if they did have AA builds, random players love to go every old direction and scatter, which means enemy teams, you'll have that one guy that kind of goes off by himself or plays this way. You've got plenty of people playing Bismarck's and Turpitz's in the ranked meta as well, which you can obliterate with the dive bombers. That's great. The torpedo bombers is kind of a supplementary damage that you can follow up on the, the armor piercing dive bomb. The Enterprise compared to Shrakon rank is very good against battleship killing. It can kind of kill cruisers and you need to get a lucky torp drop to go for destroyers. So it's not very good against cruisers, it's not very good against destroyers, but it's really, really good against battleships. And in the current ranked meta, as of right now, ranked season eight, there are a lot of battleships. So you go after when you kill a battleship. The fighter planes also have huge plane reserves. There's a lot of reserves on the front because it's got 96 units in this carrier. So there's a lot of fighter planes. That means you will outlast the Shikaku. Shikaku's got two and a half, three-ish waves of fire planes. You've got like three, four full waves of fire planes. So you can trade one for one or poorly and you'll still bleed him dry of these fire planes. Plus, your planes are more tanky than his. If he just simply clicks on engage, he loses. He has to do some sort of strafe magic to kind of beat you. And you you're aware he has to do that gives you the edge. You don't have as many bombers as he does, but the fact is you can go after the battleships as we're saying, and if you kill off a battleship, that's kind of creates a snowballing effect for your team to kind of, you know, clobber theirs. And you can also sort of scout the cap points, show the enemy destroyers are, 
you can bully the enemy Shukaku on equal the enemy Enterprise, showing the capture points, who the destroyer is, and you can maybe try and top him if he's in a disadvantaged position, but ultimately you want to kind of go for a BB that's kind of isolated, doesn't have defense fire because there's not that many cruisers. By contrast, the Shikaku is really good against destroyers and really good against cruisers because of the cross-dropping mechanic and the accuracy that it can be. It is average against battleships because it doesn't have the same alpha strike as, say, the Enterprise does. Enterprise can kill a battleship in just one wave, whereas the Shikaku has to sort of bleed and fire and flood and then repeat fire and flood with the damage control party, and that takes time. It means that the ship isn't going to die instantly, he can still have an impact on the game, and it also means that possibly he can be saved because your fighters might get back there and save him. So the Shikaku kills battleships slower over time, whereas the Enterprise can just boom, dead. You know, torpedo bombers, dive bombers, slam dead, he has nothing he can do about it, it's over. So that's the benefit of the Enterprise. So there's pluses and minuses depending on how the meta goes. But the Enterprise, as I say, is very, very good and ranked. And if I could show a ranked game, I would, but there's not anyone in the queue at this time of day. So we're going to go take it into a random battle, and we'll play it. But the thing is, I do like the Enterprise because it was a bit of a surprise to me because I didn't think it would be as good as it would be. But I really like the fact that now, for the first time in like ages, there is an, a true alternative with uh, not everything on one ship or everything the other in a ranked kind of carrier meta for ranked. Uh, the last time it was tier 7s when we had Hiryu versus Saipans. <clears throat> and there were kind of pluses and minus there, but it was still favoured the Hiryu. If the Hiryu player, if the, if the player was really good, the Hiryu was a better ship. But now, it doesn't matter if the player's really good, it's, it, you can be Enterprise or Shukaku and you can both perform quite well. It really depends on what the composition, on small percentages of what the enemy teams are. Do they have more battleships? Do they have more destroyers? If you come across a game with four destroyers in each team in a ranked game, then clearly the Shukaku is going to have an advantage. But if you come across a game with like four battleships in each game, then that's going to favour the Enterprise. And then if it was like a balanced game of 2-2-2, two, 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 it probably favours the Enterprise because he has the air control. Anyway. This game, we have a Lexington, so I know that our two fighters are going to beat hit the Lexington's one fighter. So I don't have to worry too much air control. We're actually top tier, which is really good because our AP bombs are probably going to annihilate that Nizen if we get a good hit, but he's ha he could have good AA. The other ships, they're all low tier. The Edinburgh doesn't have a defensive, neither does... Does the Perth have a defensive? I don't think the Perth has a defensive, so it's only the Pensacola we have to worry about defensive-wise. Destroyers are going to be a little bit tricky to hit, so we're not necessarily going to go after them, but we might spot them. Uh, and we'll do fighters first, then TBs, then DBs, and then, you know, we'll go after it. Provided our team doesn't kind of mess up, I don't see how we can lose this game, but, you know, touch wood, that's what happens in many games. Okay, let's see. Uh, we don't necessarily need to fall back anyway. We've got a Kuzov. That does make a nice kind of fallback point if we need to, but the fact is, our one, our two fires should dominate his single fire, but we, we need to not be, um, you know, focused vision purely on must beat fighter while his bombers go around and kill something else on the flank. We need to kind of be observant that we actually want to A, protect our bombers and B, protect our team as well. And then also, I guess, C, divine the enemy sight on our destroyers. So we'll go straight over to B, uh, because the Luoyang's going to B, so we're going to give some sight of that. I'm also hesitant when it comes to scouting with fire planes first, because I could fly into AA and I could lose a plane. Uh, and then while it doesn't matter so much in an Enterprise versus Lexington battle, if it's an Enterprise and Enterprise battle, that one plane difference is, is basically what the difference of having air supremacy and a plane not. It can be a small ball fight, so it's really important you have the full fighter strength. So I like to go up to the point where anything could spot the Luoyang and then turn. I don't necessarily want to go start spotting with the fighter plane itself. See his enemy fighter. I'm going to go over to the Luoyang so he doesn't, uh, sorry, our Mahan so he doesn't fly over that. I'm trying to spot their Mahan. Get our bombers up. The Edinburgh could, we could theoretically drop him. Oh, look, there's the Mahan. I see his fighters are incoming now. So I'm going to see if I can't lure him. No, he's not coming in. If he kept falling on, I've strafed him from the side of the one group. There's a Dunkirk. We might AP bomb him. Oh, it's possible bombers going for the Mahan, so we're going to try and see if we can't cover him. I might try and torpedo bomb the Edinburgh, because he's quite vulnerable here. He's, he's kind of going quite far out. Is he... he has a high explosive. So his fighter is on mine, so I'm gonna go like that and then exit strafe. 
so that everyone gets engaged. Now the Dunkirk is nose in, so I know I can AP bomb him, I'm just focusing the fighters for the time being. So we'll get the two group and him, we'll tend the one group to go back. Now that that's done, we see the Edinburgh's possibly smoking up, so I'm going to focus on the uh, Edinburgh first, wave up the dive bomber so they don't necessarily go anywhere, and then we'll dive bomb the Dunkirk if there's no one protecting him because he's kind of nose in. We'll watch the Edinburgh, see how he, he maneuvers. I think he's trying to smoke in his, his beach, so now he's making it very, very easy for us because we can anticipate how he's going to maneuver. He can't escape that, so he'll take a few. Oh, we lost the dive bomber to the Benson. Right, we're going to go for the Dunkirk now. So there's our Edinburgh. Takes a couple of hits. It's not the greatest drop pattern, but he's, he's pretty beat up, so anyone can finish him off. I don't want to waste the dive bombers on him. I don't actually know how good these dive bombers are on the Dunkirk. So I want to aim manually with them, because I think it's a little bit better than clicking on it. But he is turning, so he's making it difficult. But I can anticipate the turn. No. Well, that was good. Can I have a drop now? No, it's a bad drop. So we got 8 bombs, 15k. That's not a lot of damage. It's not actually that great. Sometimes you can hit the same target umpteen times. You get spectacularly high damage because you'll get, you know, proper penetrations and damage and maybe citadels. But the dive bomb currently doesn't show what those 8 hits were. Were they overpens? Were they penetration hits? You know, that type of stuff. I'm just going to get a fire plane over to the Queen Elizabeth, see if you can stop that torpedo bomber. Um, and other times you can just annihilate somebody. So some, if you're new to it, try clicking on them. But I, I always try and manually aim with it uh, to just, just improve my accuracy and to try and get all the bombs to hit. Because if you, if you auto drop, there's a chance of missing. And my luck is that it makes a nice pretty circle around the ship rather than actually doing anything. Okay, so um, our Queen Elizabeth might actually die if those torpedo bombers hit. I don't know where he's going with them, so I'm just going to send my fire planes after it. Send my other group out. I'm going to wait for the dive bombers to land before I take off the torpedo bombers. So I just want them to actually land and then prep. Actually, I don't want them to drop them at all. I don't want to panic them, so I'm going to click away and then strafe into them. And that'll kill all the bombers off, so there's no chance of them taking any hits. Although he's probably going to die because he's been focused and chased. See some other dive bombers over here, so we'll kind of keep our fire plane around the low yang. We'll get our torpedo bombers up if this King George is still an issue, which he's not, so that's fine. He will die probably anytime soon now. Cool. So we can kind of watch this area. We'll get the TVs up, and then we'll get the DBs. Like if we had launched the torpedo bombers, uh, the dive bombers wouldn't be prepping right now. So it's, it's kind of a quicker turnaround uh, overall. What can we torpedo bomb? Well, it's fighters I want to deal with first. There's the Perth and the Mahana. Can I want to spot? I'll send the fighters now to deal with these dive bombers. The New Mexico is pretty exposed there. I'm thinking we'll go after the New Mexico. Splitting his. I don't want my torpedo bombers getting in the way of me trying to kill these dive bombers. So that's why I'm kind of getting to fly around. Right, so now we'll send the fight over there to spot the Fushan. Oh, the battleship there is gone. Alright, so now it's uh, Nizanao and Dunkirk. That's a Nagato. That's what we want to go after. Got to be a little bit concerned that his fire plane is probably going to be back up by now. And I, and I would really realistically would like to have both my fire planes to deal with it. But the Nizen now is actually in the center here, so that's actually pretty good for us. So we'll go like this and we'll send the fire over there like that so they get there in time. We'll do a dive bomb first. We'll get the Tiberia roamers off to the one side. We'll slow them down slightly by waypointing them, then moving them in. <clears throat> he's killing off his speed, so he's actually making this really, really easy for us. I mean, if RNG is not cruel to us, he will die a horrible, painful death. Especially that he's lost that much health. He's 33k, we should absolutely annihilate him. But he's picking up speed, so we'll see. Can line that up. That's about as good as you could expect. Hmm, RNG says not really. Nine hits. Should realistically be absolutely like dead dead, but we'll finish it off. One torpedo bomb wave's enough. Just in case he turns round into them, we're doing it this way. If he turns away, he'll still clip a whole bunch of them. So with the now dead, we'll have the four group come back because uh, he's got fires down here. Yeah, so it's two in the front, three in the back approach. It's, I'm not a fan of that. So we'll do a head-on strafe on the torpedo bombers to go into the fighters, maybe. All right, well, maybe I'll get the fighter. Yep. I'll move him back. It's um, messing this up. Oh, is he going after that fighter plane? Nope. He's, oh, I'll just send him back to there. 
See if I chase him, that torpedo bomber. Have him go after him. He might actually get to the Sharn horse before I can catch him. We'll see. I'm gonna move the icon because that doesn't. Mm, if I hold on, there we go. So he gets two off. Uh, and see how I've got a speed advantage here. I'm just gonna click. I don't actually have speed advantage. In fact, is he's so close I can strafe him and I can just catch him. If, if you're really close to each other in planes and he's chasing you, so for example, if I have it like this and the hostile plane in the back is a chasing one, you need to turn around if it's one group. You need to turn or you need to engage because he'll just strafe you and he'll just kill you off instantly. There's no dodging that. Right, how are we doing in the game? Oh, we're, we're, we're practically one. We didn't really... It doesn't feel like we did much this game. I mean, we killed like a, a battleship. Like we can obliterate battleships in, in Go. So anyone who goes isolated, Dunkirk, Nagato, doesn't matter. At tier eight and below, if there is an isolated battleship and we can attack him with our torpedo bombers and our dive bombers, all of them, all four bomber waves, that ship will die. Provided we get a, a reasonable hit with the dive bombers, we do, you know, half health, third health, whatever. Then we can follow up the torpedo bombers and we just slam them. And then we get we get at least five or six torpedoes, and these are American ones that do a little bit more damage than the Japanese ones. And then boom, he is gone; he's dead. And that's the strength of the Enterprise, plus the the, the tankiness of the fire planes being able to outmuscle every other tier. So let's see. I'm gonna group up the TBs. The dive bombers are already grouped up. We'll see if we can't try armor piercing dive bombs on the. Oh, hello. One sec. See how he's done up. He's got a catapult fighter, so I'm gonna. I'll send the torpedo bombers down on him now because he's turning. He makes it easier for the torpedo bombers to hit him. And he's turning back in on them again. So the, that's the, the catapult fighter dealt with. So he's turning back hard right, so I'm gonna go like that. Uh, he's actually turning. If he turns back left again, he'll have dodged that pretty well. Oh, oh. He'll probably yeah, you'll probably die to like the Colorado. Let's let's try armor piercing dive bomb the Nagat. We'll see what happens there. And I'm being attacked as well. Hi there. Could you finish him off? That would be grand. And and normally if this was a ranked game, I would kill secure the Dunkirk, but I'm actually curious more so about I'm gonna conserve the fire plane ammo. How well I can do against Nagato. Just click on the line it up. And just in case the Colorado doesn't finish him off. Three bombs, two K. Wow, that was that was horrendously bad. And then the other guy was firing him as well, so we'll try and finish him off. Okay. That's pretty good. Better. Four bombs, seventeen K, that's better. And we'll recharge all our planes now. If we needed to scout, we could use like a dive bomber, you know, like we drop one. If we need to spot a destroyer or something, but ultimately in the Enterprise, I'm looking to recycle all my bombers. If I need to scout, I would. It depends on how high the A is. If it's like a fighter or if they can spot a destroyer, maybe. Um, I would like, because the dive bombers will do so much damage, if there are targets in the game that are good to be dive bombed, then I try to not scout the dive bombers. I'll scout the torpedo bomber, for example. But if there are tar there are no dive bombing targets, maybe I'll use one dive bomber to scout, uh, as, as an example. Uh, it's kind of selective, because the Japanese ones, they don't need to use their dive bombers as much, so they can use they can afford to sacrifice. Shikaku can support to sacrifice one of its fighters um, in the... Uh, Uh, you know, in, in this kind of scouting role. I want to even kill the plane, that's annoying. I don't want to use the defense fire because there's no point. But he, I, I've got him over my AA and we'll just pick him off with my A. That's fine, so there we go. It's a fun ship. You do a bunch of damage, you can get clear skies, I guess. Um, you know, it's it's enjoyable. You have to be careful when you come into the, the 910 games. Because when you're in the 910 games, the AA is more hostile. Your armor-piercing dive bombs, they're not good against battleships. You have to be selective on the cruisers you're going after. The 
your fighters get eaten up by AA, so it's very you have to be really, really, really careful with your target selection. And you might find that ultimately it's a game of patience. You need to wait until the enemy team spreads out, you know, goes in different directions and just spreads out so that you can then attack an isolated target. What can you do in the meantime? You can maybe go after a destroyer. And I know I said going after the destroyer is awkward, but maybe you can go after a DD. Maybe you can uh, spot the caps, spot incoming torpedoes. Be that supporting player for the rest of the team in a 9-10 game. You're not going to go out and get damage immediately. You're just basically going to go and see what the enemy is doing, give your team information, deny the enemy team from necessarily spotting you, and, and that's as much you can expect. And then when the game develops and you've saved your bombers, because you don't have that many in terms of reserves, then at that point, yeah, maybe, you know what, you can start considering attacking anything that's isolated. Because there's no reason why you can't attack, for example, a Fredrish or a Yamato. It just comes down to whether or not, um, you know, you can get in there if there's defensive planes and all that type of stuff. Yeah. When you're dropping a ship like this, see the drop reticle? Um, you can make it so that at least some torpedoes connect. So you either put them in the middle, or if it's only a single plane wave, <clears throat> it'd be a giant V, but the center line is where the torque will drop. It's not random, it's like if it's two planes, then there'll be one on this edge and there'll be one on that edge. If it's one plane, there'll be one on the center edge, and if it's three, then there'll be a center line and there'll be two edges. And if it's four, then it's kind of spread out like that. So you, can, you know how the drop pattern of your torpedo bombers is going to be, so you can anticipate it, so you can get at least one, maybe two to clip. And if you've got two waves, you can kind of crisscross it, so you know that even through a defensive fire, a target as big as an aircraft carrier, you'll clip them with a few torps if you need to attack them through the defensive fire. Cool, top spot, did relatively well, nice stuff. So that's just the caveat of the game. The fact is there are, there are 101 different uh, scenarios of how you may play the CV and what bracket and tiering, you know, against six, seven, eights, great. Against nine, tens, you gotta tweak your play style a little bit. How good is the Enterprise? It's a very enjoyable ship to play. It's definitely tankier in terms of the fighter role. Does the fighter job better than the Shikaku? It's very good against battleships, things that the Shikaku can, but not as great. But then again, the Shikaku has its own strengths against the Zhars and, and, and the cruisers, as well as other things and scouting. So there's flexibility between the both. There's not like this CV is definitely better unless you go into competitive and then it's still the Chicago though. But you get what I'm saying. It's, it's a very fun ship, and if you're looking for a premium tier of carrier, I absolutely recommend the Enterprise. It's very, very enjoyable. But I would say the skill floor is somewhat high because you have down tier play, and so the approach angle is correct. And because there's multiple play styles for the tiers that you're in, you need to be somewhat aware of what has good A, what doesn't have good A, what I am good at, my dive bombers are good damage against, what my dive bombers are not good damage against, you know, what's target priority selection. You know, you need to know how to control your fighters, that tough. And the, the skill ceiling is like just as high as any of the other carriers, but the floor is, you can definitely maximize it, but you need to practice, you need to know kind of what you're doing and then it's okay. It's not as forgiving as, say, for example, the, the side pan. And you're not in the tier seven bracket, so you're away from all those tier 10 players. No, you're in the tier eight, which means you will be dragged into the tier tens, you will be dragged into the Minotaurs and the Hindenburgs and the Des Moines and all those long range AA multi defensive fire things. So you need to, there's an element of patience there and knowing what to play and how to play and when to do it. But anyway, that concludes this video on the Enterprise. We might do a video on the Graf Zeppelin, but ultimately it's not finished and there's no point rehashing the same stuff. We're waiting for it to be done and when it is probably finished done, which will be some time from now, maybe a month or two, then we'll come back and we'll have a look at what the Graf Zeppelin is and its own little set of histories. Anyway, that being said, thank you very much for watching this set and uh, until next time, we'll see you then. Goodbye.